In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to solo complete the main easter egg on the Black Ops 4 Zombies map Alpha Omega. You can check the description for the timings of each step in case you're looking for something in particular. Before we start, here's the loadout that I would recommend. For elixirs, really the only important one is Undead Man Walking, but Temporal Gift, Anywhere But Here, and Equipment are always helpful. For perks, I ran with Dying Wish, Stamina Up, Quick Revive, and Winter's Whale. I used the Ragnaroks as my specialist, Wraith Fire for Equipment, and the Mog 12 as my starting weapon. So as soon as you jump in, the first thing you'll want to do is turn on Power, which is located at the other end of the map from where you spawn. After that, you'll then want to activate Pack-a-Punch. Survive the lockdown in the generators area, then go back up to the town and repair four broken ventilation units. If you don't already know how to do certain things that I mentioned in this video, you can find links to their quick guides in the description. Also, I would recommend going into your audio settings and turning on subtitles. These come in handy when doing certain steps of the easter egg. So after you've done Pack-a-Punch, you'll need to end the round to activate this computer in the operations house. Once it's on, you can interact with it to begin the next step. What you now have to do is input four four-digit codes in a certain order. The first one will always be 7626, and you can see it on a piece of paper on this nearby desk. The second code you'll need to put in can be found across the street in the MPD interrogation house. This piece of paper has three spawn locations. The first one can be found on the back of this desk in the corner, the second one is in the other corner on this terminal, and then the final location is up the stairs on the end of another terminal. The third code you'll need has only one spawn location, and it can be found to your left when entering the APD control room. If you shoot this stack of papers, you'll be able to see the code. Now from there, if you head into the solitary area, you can find a key in a box on the wall. This is needed for the fourth code. Once you've got the key, make your way to the yellow house and interact with this desk to open up the drawer for your final code. With all four codes, head over to the Rushmore computer and input them in order using this number pad. This is done by aiming at the numbers and interacting with them and then hitting enter. Once you've entered all four codes, Project Toy Soldier will be activated, which we'll need in a later step. Next, save up about 7,000 points to open up the truck so you can buy Galvanuckles. Once you've got them, head down into the bunker and look for a TV that is playing static. There are four TVs you'll need to check. The first one can be found on this box in the diner, the second and third are both located in the beds area on the left and right sides of Pack-a-Punch, and the final TV can be found across from the tent in the lounge area. Once you've found the TV that is on, kill a zombie near it with your Galvanuckles. This will cause a computer system to read a list of five codes. Each one will have a letter followed by four numbers. It's a lot easier to read them if you have subtitles on. So for example, the first code in my game was C0645. You'll actually want to turn the numbers part of that into a time, so mine would be 645. Another example would be A, 1200. This would be 12 o'clock. Go ahead and take note of everything the computer system says in the order she says it and then convert them. Once you've got all five times, come back up to the town. Now each house has a nearby mailbox with a letter on it. This is where those letters come into play from the codes. What you have to do is head to the house that matches one of your code's first letter and then input its time on a clock inside. For example, again, my first code was C and the time was 645. This means I'm going to head to the house with a C on its mailbox and interact with its clock to change it so it reads 645. If you knife the clock, you'll move the hour hand, and if you simply interact with it, you'll move the minute hand. House A, the yellow house, house B, the green house, and house E, the operations house, will all have clocks on their second floors. House C, the prisoner holding, house D, the fusion facility, and house F, the MPD interrogation, will all have clocks on their lower levels. You have to visit and change each house's clock in the order you were given them by the computer system. Every time you do, you'll get a quote saying security clearance granted. After you've done all five, you then have to head to the house that wasn't mentioned in your list of codes, since there are six houses. Once there, interact with its clock, and it will automatically change to a different time. Take note of the time it changes to. In my game, house E was the only one left, so the clock changed to read 3 o'clock. You then need to change this back into a 4 digit code like the ones you got from the computer system, so mine would be 0300. If you get something like 12 o'clock, then it would be 1200. Also really quick, when you input times in the clocks, they will unlock things in the houses. Now most of them are just traps that you can use, but a locker will open up in the prisoner holding to give you a free upgraded weapon, and then the ray gun mark 2 case in the operations house will also open up. I would recommend grabbing both of those. So anyway, with that new code you got from that last clock, go ahead and input it into the computer and hit enter. Rushmore will say that you failed and he still doesn't trust you, but don't worry, you did it correctly. Next, you have to go around the map and find a red Nova 6 crawler. Once you've got it, you then have to lead it all the way up to the fusion facility house. During this, a whole bunch of zombies will spawn, so just try to focus on keeping that crawler behind you while you slowly make your way to the house. If you kill or lose the crawler, you'll have to find it again on the next round. Once you reach the house, the crawler will jump out of the map. After that, go ahead and interact with Rushmore. For the next step, make your way down into the storage area. On your way there, go ahead and knife this door to get a quote from Marlton. So in the storage room will be a robot called Sergeant Adam. Activate him, then bring him all the way back to Marlton's door. Once there, Adam will scare Marlton and he'll throw out a canister for you to pick up. Head back to the fusion facility, and if you interact with the shelf, you'll place down the canister. From there, interact with Rushmore to move on. For the next step, you'll want to place a teleporter piece on the pad in the power switch room, as well as on the one outside of the prisoner holding house. Then make your way back to the first teleporter and wait for a jolting jack to spawn. What you need to do is either kill one right next to the server 
box or have it shoot the box with an electrical blast. You'll know the server's been shocked when the box opens up. For this next part, you have a limited amount of time to get it done, so try to be quick. Once you're ready, interact with the server, then jump into the teleporter straight away. This will take you over to the prisoner holding house, where you'll then need to run next door to install the additional component. This can easily be done if you have stamina up, but it is possible without it. You can also try using your specialist since it gives you a speed boost. After that, again, interact with Rushmore. For this next part, you need to double upgrade a weapon until you get the brain rot ammo type. Once you've got it, you then need to get a turned zombie to tear down three paintings. Behind each painting is a code you'll need to take note of. The first painting is located in the beds area on the wall opposite of Pack-a-Punch. The second one can be found in the lounge just before taking the exit out of the bunker. And the final painting is located at the top of the stairs in the greenhouse. From there, input each code into the Rushmore computer. After he's done talking, go ahead and interact with him. For the next step, all power in the map will shut off. What you need to do is restart it by adjusting six power boxes. The first box is located in the diner, and this switch has to be in the up position. The second box can be found in the beds area, and this switch has to be in the up position as well. If the switches are already in the correct positions, then you don't have to worry about them and you can move on to the next one. The third box is in the lounge, and this switch needs to be in the down position. The fourth box can be found in the generator's room, and this switch needs to be in the up position. The fifth box is in the storage room, and this switch needs to be in the down position. And finally, the sixth box is located in the solitary area, and this switch needs to be in the down position. If done correctly with this final switch, all the lights on the box should change the green. If they are, you can head back to the power switch and turn it back on. Then make your way to Rushmore and interact with them. Next, you have to survive three lockdowns. You start these by interacting with an atom unit somewhere on the map that is sparking blue. Some common areas to check would be the backyard of the green, yellow, and brown house, the lounge, the diner, the backyard of the transfusion facility, and the prisoner holding house. When you start a lockdown, you'll need to stay inside that area for about a minute. Use your ray gun, equipment, and specialist to survive against the zombies. After each one is done, you'll need to go back to the unit's location and pick up a piece that it left behind. Once you've collected three pieces, head to the APD interrogation house and place them on this unit in the chair. This will pause the round to deliver some story details. After everyone is done talking, you can move on to the final step. What you now have to do is find a blue orb somewhere on the map. It will most likely be hiding behind a zombie spawn, so be sure to check in every window and door. Once you find it, the orb will then take the longest route back to the APD interrogation house. All you have to do is stay with it to keep it moving. If you lose it, you'll have to end the round and find it again somewhere else. Once the orb finally reaches the house, it will take the place of that unit in the chair. After some dialogue, you can then interact with Rushmore for the final time. This will unlock the boss fight. Now before you move on, just be sure to have all of your perks, a full shield, and whatever weapons you want. I would also recommend working on getting and pack-a-punching the Raygun Mark II V at some point in your game, since it basically has unlimited ammo. This was the only weapon I used during the entire boss fight. Once you think you're ready, head down to the APD control room and interact with this central panel to activate the release sequence. Now what you have to do is charge one of the APD's canisters with souls from Atom units, which will spawn in like regular zombies. After you've killed enough of them, the door to the APD will open up and the Avogadro will step out. After some exchange of dialogue, you'll then need to go charge four more canisters in the bunker with more souls. If you take a look at the monitors above the central panel, it'll tell you the best order to fill them. You can find one next to the tent in the lounge, at the base of these stairs in the diner, across from the Titan wall by in the storage room, and then in the beds area just before taking the exit into the diner. Interact with the canister to begin charging. Now during this, there's a couple of things you'll want to keep in mind. On top of all the zombies and dogs spawning, the Avogadro will also be following you. But he is extremely slow, so I found that I could go on the opposite end of the room from where he was and still fill the canisters. If you do get close to him, he will zap you with an electrical blast and can sometimes stun you which will momentarily disable your weapons. But as I said, if you stay away from him, he shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Another thing to remember is that if the Avogadro gets too close to the canister, he can completely shut it off and you'll have to wait for it to cool down. Once you've successfully filled a canister, you'll get a max ammo and a carpenter. The Avogadro will also electrify the area once their canisters are done, so you need to try and get out as fast as possible. So once you've filled all four canisters, you need to make your way back to the APD control room while trying to avoid the areas that are electrified. When the Avogadro finally catches up, this is when I would recommend using Undead Man Walking to slow down the zombies for a bit. If you don't want to use any elixirs, you can always try using monkey bombs. So what you have to do is punch the Avogadro to get him to kneel over and then shoot him. This will push him in whatever direction you're shooting. Keep on punching and shooting him until he reaches the stairs of the APD. Once there, he'll get sucked back inside and the door will close. Then if you head back to that central panel and interact with it, you will have completed the easter egg. The APD will then open back up for you to collect the elemental shard. After that, the cutscene will begin to play. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below and I'll be sure to help in any way that I can. Anyway, have fun with this easter egg and I wish you luck.